Hello there. My name is Brian B. Meeks, and today I'm going to be talking to you about mastering descriptions. I'm going to share my screen here. The I'm doing this on a GoToWebinar, and we have a couple people attending. Those folks who are attending, Ann and Lisa, if you have a question, go ahead and try doing it in the little bit on the side there. I don't know if I'll be able to figure that out. This is, this is the presentation for the Alliance for Independent Authors, and we're going to talk about mastering descriptions. The thing about the description, most authors don't enjoy writing the descriptions. I, in fact, had a point where I put off launching a book for an entire, for two months, 60 days, where I had finished everything from the, the book was done, it was edited, the cover art was done, all of the ISBN information was filled out except for the description. I had everything filled out on KDP except for the description. And I said to myself, well, I'll just do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow came. And I said, well, you know what? I really don't want to do it today. I'll do it the next day. And this just kept happening every day until eventually I, well, 60 days had passed. And I just realized how ridiculous it was. So I opened a Word document, wrote a horrific, horrific one paragraph synopsis of the book, cut and pasted it, and hit publish. I was so disgusted with putting off a launch for 60 days that I, I, I'm, not, I'm not particularly great at doing launches, but this was quite some time ago where I was worse at it, that when I was done, I reached out to Sean Platt from the self-publishing podcast. He's a former copywriter where he, he did this for a living and i knew that copywriting is a science there, there's there's an art to it there's a science to it and it does impact people's decision making it can lead people to buy something to, to choose your book over someone else's and in fact later i'll tell a story about the copywriting miracle which i'm kind of proud of but for now let, let's get into the description here because into the mastering descriptions because that moment after i reached out to sean he recommended a book by sugarman once i started reading that book and then went and put into practice some of the things that he talked about i saw immediate improvement and then over a couple year period helping other authors hundreds of descriptions rewriting them, I continued to improve as a copywriter. And the difference, I did the math one month after I had rewritten the descriptions for, for my fiction books, because I keep a lot of data, I went back and looked at the number of clicks I had over a year, and I do an enormous amount of Amazon advertising, and I calculated based on the new conversion rate for these descriptions, what I would have had in sales had I made those changes a year earlier. I left $60,000 on the table by not learning this skill a year earlier. Now, some people are pessimists, some are optimists. I'm a bit of an optimist, instead of saying, woe is me, look at all the money I could have had, I said, wow, I'm glad I didn't wait five more years. So that's sort of what got me on this path to beginning the research to understanding descriptions. Now, what people don't or haven't necessarily thought about is the opening line has to be a hook. 
This is, uh, despite the, the color choice of my palette, the, the hookum here is not a University of Texas reference, although now that I look at it, it sure seems like it. But Facebook has killed our attention spans. How many folks out there are on Facebook? I'm sure most of you are. And when a friend posts something, maybe it's about their child who has done a remarkable thing at wrestling camp or they have a new puppy. If you see that there's eight to 10 lines in a single giant paragraph, do you really read it? Most of you, I'm sure, are shaking your heads no. You click like, you click love, you move on. Copywriting can get people to read your post. It can get people to buy your books. But the important thing is to hook them. Now, Facebook, because we have gotten so used to just click, 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 our attention spans are absolutely fractured. I believe you have, well, I don't know that it's three nanoseconds, but the amount of time you have to hook a person who is wandering around Amazon or Barnes and Noble or Kobo, just looking for their next read is an instance, just an instant. The point being, if you don't grab them immediately with a hook, they may just look at your massive description full of big blocky text and not bother to read it. And that's why the conversion rate on poorly written descriptions, or actually I would say typical descriptions, is around one in 30 to one in 35. If you've got a book priced at what I call full price, $4.99, and it's a synopsis of the story, you're probably on your paid advertising converting it between one and 30 and one and 35. The descriptions that we're gonna learn about today convert at between one and eight to one and 10 which if you're paying for clicks, you don't need to be a math genius to know you'd rather pay for eight than 10. So remember that, one in 30 or one in 10. Now, I believe that in a description, short is sweet. The reason, the reason for that, it goes back to my point about the attention span. If you have a short, quick opening, where you can grab their attention, get them to read the next line, get them to move down and get it to the point where they click that read more button, you're going to do better than if you have an entire two, three lines of paragraphs, or, or of a paragraph trying to stuff as much as you can above the fold. That's old school marketing, above the fold, it refers to newspapers, you wanted to be above having to fold the paper and it doesn't really apply for your book descriptions. Now, Sugarman, I, I referenced his book, Ad Week. He says, the only job of the first line is to get them to read the second line. If you take anything away from this today, it's that. When you're writing your first line of your description, it has one purpose, not to sell the book, is to just get them to move on to the next line. And if you keep that in mind, you'll start to see improvement. The goal of line two, believe it or not, get them to line three. You want to move them from the opening bit to then read more, at which point you start to give them some meat, a little, a little paragraph, two, two and a half lines of interesting stuff about the story but try to avoid writing a synopsis of the story. You don't want it to be Susie did this, then Susie did this, then Susie did this, and she met this guy who did this, who did this, who did this, buy my book. Well, most people don't even have to buy my book. They just list off all the things that happen in the book and the synopsis is done and there's really very little reason to buy the book at that point. And so, it's not really serving its purpose. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is watch your data. But before I go to this slide, 
I think I'm going to take a moment, I'm going to grab a description, and we're going to go through it because I really want you to see what I mean about the layout, about how it looks on the page, and then we'll talk about once you have changed your description, what you need to do afterwards because people, not all people, but authors tend to panic far too quickly. And so we want you to be able to improve your description, but we also want you to understand how, is the new description superior to the old description? And so let me grab a, I have Amazon up here and well, let's, let's hope that I, I had it. But you know, I've, I felt I was prepared, but uh, that, that may be, um, oh, that's not, there we go. Okay, so my apologies. Here we go. Now I'm going to close this up so that we can see above the fold. This is a new book of mine. This is a couple months old. Uh, I'm doing rapid release on a new epic fantasy series. And this description is, is doing well for me. Let's look at the first line. I'm going to make this a little bigger so it's easier to see on the screen. Nothing survives the fog, dot, dot, dot. Now, I often misuse ellipses in description writing because I'm less concerned about the rules of punctuation than I am about getting the sale. So for those of you out there that see that I have an ellipses followed by an ellipses, uh, that's entirely by design. Nothing survives the fog. Now, the thing about this first line, remember, our goal is to get to the second line. If you look in the middle here, your peripheral vision can see all the way to the end and all the way to the ellipses. This is by design. If the first line was this one, would, would the exception mean the destruction of the kingdom? You can't do that. You, most people, I don't think, could look at the H here and see the whole line. The idea here, we want it to be short enough that the person can seize it, it registers, and it gets them to that second line before they lose interest. And as I said earlier, the attention spans are so short, we don't want to assume they're, you know, maybe there's stuff going on and they're just casually looking through Amazon or Kobo or iBooks and they clicked on your ad and got to this page and you know they looked at the picture and oh there's some reviews but maybe that's as far as they got we want to get them to nothing survives the fog that ellipses though is going to make them go to the next line at least that's what they thought well that's sort of a hook that implies that well something didn't would the exception mean the destruction of the kingdom now I'm going to be honest here. This word exception, this description, as far as the, the data I have for it, is doing very well. I'm considering maybe changing that word. I'm wondering if dragon would be a better word. I, I don't know, but the point being that any changes you make, even if you see a substantial improvement to your description, it doesn't mean you won't improve as a copywriter and six months down the road want to take a look at it again. I hope you'll remember that because it, it is a skill where with time and practice one will improve and I, I feel like I've been improving and I'm still improving. So this has been a two years of, of research to get to where I wrote Mastering Amazon Descriptions and I don't believe I'm as good as I will be in a year. I think I'll be better then and, and continue to improve. Now, we will continue on here. Now, I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller because this is more typical of, of what it's going to look like for most people. And I do that now because I want you to see how the weight, that, that it's, it's got a certain feel to it. It isn't a giant block of text that turns people off. We've got 
a line, a blank line, line, blank line, line, blank line, paragraph, two and a half lines long, some short lines, another multiple line paragraph, a you'll, a because, I get it now. Let's go through the whole thing. Nothing survives the fog. At least that's what they thought. Would this exception mean the destruction of the kingdom? He saw her, he saw her walk in and knew something was wrong. Marl hadn't seen his sister-in-law since his wife and daughter's funeral. She blamed himself. She blamed herself, sorry. But Marl knew it was his fault. If he hadn't roped Laura into going after the young dragon, well, things would be different. The life he had built on, at his little tavern hadn't healed his pain. Could he find redemption or did he need revenge? Alora said, he's back. Marl asked, how? Flew out of the fog. You better get your gear. In a world shielded from invaders for centuries and lulled into a false sense of security, only two people truly understood the danger. Who will stand by their side? You'll love this new adventure because everyone has regrets and yearns for a chance to fix the past. Get it now. The this is a little bit different style than, than even some of my other descriptions. And like I said, I, I believe that I'm always trying to find a better path, one that reads a little easier, maybe is more story-like. There's, there's very little in this description that tells the reader about the book. I want to hint at what might happen. Well, he's back. How? Flew out of the fog, you better get your gear. So that is implying that the book is probably going to start off with a you know, get the gang back together, build the party sort of thing. In a world shielded from invaders for centuries and lulled into a false sense of security, only two people truly understood their danger, who will stand by their side, which reinforces that part. I don't say Cal and Trelina and Rihanna and uh, a guy whose name I can't remember right now, <laughs> all decide to help out. That's a synopsis. That, that's, that's not good uh, sales comp because that's what we're doing. We're trying to sell the books. And then you and because. Now, if you're taking notes, at this point, I want you to write down these five words. You, because, new, instantly and free. Those are five incredibly powerful copywriting words. There are articles out there, you can probably Google it and or go to Copyblogger. I think there was a, a good article I read there once about those five words. I always try to use you'll and because towards the end of my description for the reason that this is, I'm talking about the book, and then I'm talking to the reader. And I think that's important because I go from what's, what's going on in the book or attempting to get them interested in the book to, hey, you will love this new adventure because get it now. And that is, that's got a good cadence to it. It's, we expect to get it now or buy it now, download it now. At the end, which most people don't have a call to action. This is something where some authors, oh, oh, I don't like to feel like I'm selling my books. Oh, I hate calls to action. Oh, they creep me out. It's, we've been exposed to this in all of our advertising for the entirety of our lives. Our brains expect a call to action. When it's not there, I mean, to get it now, people aren't really reading that. It's just a signpost. It's just a little sign there that says, hey, it's time to make a decision. I know you're already intrigued. Let's go up and get reading on this book. That's important. Now, I, was, I think I'm going to take a moment to show you a horrible description of mine. Okay, now this one, the Kendall version, is my best description. This one is great, but the paperback version I intentionally left 
the original description that I had on the Kindle book when I first launched. And let's let's take a look. Actually, before we, we do that, let's look at the description here. This one converts at one and eight. Art Deco cover. Henry knew one thing. Dames were trouble. Would this client be the exception? She walked in, sat down, crossed her legs, and asked for a light. Boy, could she cross a leg. Before the woman had told him why she needed a detective, Henry wondered if she was playing him. It was something about her. The red lips and smoldering eyes were just a little too perfect. She knew how to get her way. And the dress, she wore a Dior dress that would make an hourglass self-conscious. Was it the damsel in distress act? This was the second one he had seen this week. Something wasn't adding up. 1955 was going to be an interesting year. You'll love this noir mystery with a twist because everyone loves a broken detective trying to do what's right. Get it now. This is the third version of my description. The second one, back when I was telling you that story of how I decided I needed to learn copywriting and then I started to redo my descriptions. The second one took me from converting at one in 30 to 35 to one in 10 to 12. And because of personal hubris, for a year and a half, close to two years, I assumed that that description was perfect, that it couldn't get any better. And then I wrote this one, and it was much better. And well, one in eight, or one in 10 to one in 12 versus one in eight doesn't seem like a lot. If you're paying 20 cents a click, well, you're spending $1.60 instead of $2.40. It doesn't seem like a lot of money, but over the life of a book, it's an enormous amount of money. Now, and I mean, if you're spending 50 cents a click, that, that gap grows. Anyway, let's go to the horrible description on the paperback. Okay, first off, original cover as well. Okay, several things. There's also a couple typos in here, but we're, this, is, this is the way it was. This is how I started in the business. This was, uh, oh, when was this published? Gee whiz. Um, uh, published in July 20th, 2011. Okay. Henry Wood is a private detective in 1955. It is January, a new year, and before he can recover from celebrating its the incorrect use of its, there should be no apostrophe. Recovery from celebrating its arrival, a woman wanders into his office, not the correct wonders. W-O-N should be W-A-N. So two heirs into his office, she needs to hire him. She isn't the only one. He is in New York, loves the Brooklyn Dodgers, enjoys woodworking, and will soon find that he has gotten in over his head with this new case. This description is an abomination on so many levels. It, it's just, oh, it's just horrible. So we're not gonna dwell on this, but some of you may have descriptions that are a single block of text. They may just list off facts about the book. And if that's so, hopefully by the end of the day, you won't do that anymore. Anyway, let's go back to, let's go back to my lovely PowerPoint so I can figure out where I'm at in this process. Okay, I'm going to take it just a moment because there are people attending this and, oh, there's, there's a member of people. Um, oh, yeah. Let me just see if any of them have questions. Honestly, I, I don't see any. And my attendees are kind of here just because I asked them to come. It's easier to speak to an audience, even if I can't hear them or... Uh, you know, no, oh, I, I did just get a smiley face. So thank you, Jane. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna go back to things here and continue talking about descriptions. I hope at this point, you can see the difference between the way most descriptions are done and the way proper copywriting creates a description. Now, it, it, it doesn't happen overnight and I have a group on Facebook that is free to join. There's, there's no rules. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I have another group on Amazon ads where I ask that everyone buy the book. 
but with mastering Amazon descriptions, just you know, you can come hang out and I encourage the people in the group mastering Amazon descriptions to share their descriptions, get feedback from one another, which is important when you're starting out because I've written hundreds and hundreds of descriptions. It, it's it's kind of easy for me now, but for a long time, even though I could sit down and write another person's description based solely on the existing they description description they had and comments in the the reviews, it was harder to do my own. And that's because of the whole seeing the forest for the trees. We've written these books. We put our our souls into them. They're, 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 I don't have children, but if I did have children, I would love them less than I love my books. And, and I understand that the books, I, I mean, we, we put a lot into them. And so the natural desire is to It's the, the, the natural desire is for a person to want to tell the potential reader all the good stuff in the book. That's, that's what we want to do. So it's very hard to tell a potential reader almost nothing about the book. In the Henry Wood description that I read you, I didn't mention really anything about the book other than the 1955 was going to be a hard year and that that's really a hard concept to get across but our goal isn't i mean I, I, our goal is to sell the book and i've done a lot of research hinting at what might happen is better than telling them what will happen and you will run across people that say oh well when i buy a book i like to have as much information as possible that's fine but understand this, one person's opinion is not statistically valid. We are talking about a, a scenario where we are trying to get to a point where we fail 90% of the time. That's one in 10. That's 10 people coming to your book and nine, nine of them saying no, which is an improvement from failing 96.7% of the time, which is when one person buys it and 29 people don't. So it, it, it's about, it, it's just numbers. Anyway, I, I, I beat that to death. Anyway, the, oh, there's another comment. Um, Harrison. Oh, this is nice. Harrison says, this is really what I needed to hear right now as I'm redoing my descriptions. Many thanks. So this is why I record this with some humans in attendance because uh, it, it's nice for me to hear the feedback. Anyway, back to our, our fancy pants PowerPoint. So understand this. If you change a description, it is either an improvement or not. If we had the ability to push 10,000 clicks in a day to the original description and 10,000 clicks in a day to the new description, one of them would win. It wouldn't be a tie over a large number of viewers. It may well be, and I would expect if you have a really bad description, you may see a substantial improvement immediately. But here's the problem. This, this is another one of those things where I want you to pay attention. If you've been watching this video and playing with your cat or also checking Facebook, take a moment to stop being distracted and pay attention. Because as I said earlier, authors panic. You need to analyze your description and it takes time. You need to look at not just what happens the next day. And I see this over and over again. An author changed her description and she wrote me the next day. She said it didn't work. And I, I know that there hasn't been enough time for it to work or not work. And I said, well, can we look at your data? 
and she gave me her data. And we looked at on the day before she had five sales and on the day after she had three sales. That was the extent of her analysis. So I asked her, well, seven days ago, was it still the same description? Yeah, it was. Well, you only had one sale on that day. And, and she didn't understand what I was talking about. So I explained it. If you look at your timeline of your sales, there's variance. Some days you have five sales, some days you have seven, some days you have two. Bit authors who sell a lot of books, some days they have 250 sales, some days they have 370, some days they have 190. All with the same description. But the difference is how many people viewed the description on that individual day. It is entirely possible that on the day that she had three, there were vastly fewer people that visited the description than on the day she had five. Maybe on the day she had five, somebody wrote a blog post and said, hey, this is a great book and sent a bunch of people there. Or her ad that was doing great on that day had a lot of clicks, 150 clicks or something, and then it died the next day. So the point being is in your analysis, you need to understand that it takes time so that you can have enough paid clicks to be able to do the math and to alleviate the variance. So how long does it take to know? I'm going to give you just a broad guideline, and then I'm going to show you an example that immediately breaks that rule, but hopefully I'll be able to show you why I, I think my, my example is, is, is reasonable and giving us an indication. It is not, well, I'm getting into the weeds here, and I can, I can hear myself getting into the math weeds, and I know when I do this, people start to weep, but I'm the son of a mathematician. I can't help it, it's who I am. I love the M word. I try to avoid using the M word, but the realities are most of you are probably better writers than me, but I do this full time and I succeed because I'm really good at math and analytics. The hope is I can paint it, a picture for you that you can do and it won't cause anyone lasting emotional scars. So that's what we're gonna to try to do. How do you tell the difference and how long does it take to know? If you're not doing paid advertising, you probably need to give it a couple months. If you're doing paid advertising, you probably need to give it 30 days or a thousand paid clicks on that book. Now you can start to get a feel for how it's doing before then, and that's what I'm gonna show you in a moment. And if you are going from one of those synopses to a proper copywriting description, you may be able to tell in less time, but it's not something you're gonna be able to figure out the next day. So the next thing, and, and this is a, this I just wanna talk about because I think this happens. Before you start analyzing, take a look at yourself. Are you a pessimist or are you an optimist? There's a thing called observation bias or something. I, 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 I'm not getting that right, I don't think. But the point of this is I want you to think about who you are. If you're a pessimist, be aware that you're a pessimist and understand that everything you do, your little voice in your head tells you it's gonna fail. And if you're in that mindset, when you make a change to something, you're gonna be looking for validation that you're a failure or that the, the description is a failure or that your methodology is a failure. And this will be the case in everything. If you're an optimist, it's the polar opposite. I'm an optimist. And so I need to constantly be aware that I am not seeing great results in data that is, is too small a sample size, that I'm not reading into my data goodness that doesn't exist yet. So it, it doesn't matter which one of those groups you are. 
just please be aware of it. And then when, if you're an optimist and you look at your data and think, this is great, and, and I do that. But then I look at my data and say, where are the cracks in my theory? And, and admittedly, I mean, I'm, I'm a trained data analyst. I did it for seven years at Geico, where a 15 minute call could save you 15% on your auto insurance. And so, so I have some skill in this area and I'm, I'm, I can sense when I'm going awry and maybe skewing my data with just uh, rainbows and puppy dogs. But you know, if, if you're aware of that, you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. So um, take 30 days or a thousand paid clicks to analyze your results. Take the number of clicks divided by the sales plus the KU downloads. Now this sales and the KU downloads is where this would be for anyone who's exclusive. The data I'm gonna show you in a moment is for my Dragon's Fury, which is wide. If you're wide, you only have sales. So that is just clicks divided by sales. If you're wide or if you're an established author who has a lot of or any level of sales consistently right now with the way you're doing things, you may want to look at a period of time, 60 days. If you had 60 days prior to making the change where you didn't do any newsletter swaps, you didn't do any, uh, you, you didn't have a book bub, you didn't change your advertising, you know, going from spending $100 a month to 1000 a month, or you know, just a period where it's pretty typical of what you're doing, and hopefully will continue to do after the change, you may want to look at a baseline. And you just simply take 60 days, uh, let's say the person had 600 sales in 60 days, that's 10 sales a day. So what you would hope is the number of paid clicks, because one thing you need to understand is most authors don't get organic. If your book is ranked 334,722 and it's on page 58 of your best keyword and you're not doing ads, nobody's going to page 58, that ranking isn't showing up on any lists, organic just doesn't happen. If you're an author that's doing five figures a month, ten, twenty thousand dollars, and you're listening to this lecture, and, and I, I know many, many authors who uh, ten, twenty, hundred thousand dollars a month. Well, I don't know many that are doing hundred thousand, but I know a dozen or so. The point being is they would have to, if you're one of those big time authors, you have to do the analysis a little bit differently in that you need to look at your baseline and compare before and after. Most of you are probably not in that boat, so we will move on. Now, the, the, that was my tip if the data is muddy. So if, if you're somebody that has a lot of sales, the data may be a little muddier, in which case you look at a period of time, you figure out the average, and here's another important point. Start paying attention again. There is no rounding in data analysis. When I ask somebody, how many sales did you have on average over 60 days? If they tell me seven, they're lying. It's probably 6.7, 7.33, it matters. I know we tend to, I mean, I've had people that had eight and they rounded it to 10. Uh, that, that's a big deal. Don't do that, do the math, figure it out to, you know, 7.1, 3.5, whatever it is, because especially when you have smaller volume, if you're averaging over 30 days, 0.72, don't say about one sale a day, because that, that's a huge difference. That's a massive change in your data. And it means that when you're doing the after, you will be cheating the results. And you, you know, we need to get accurate results. So I don't mean to be too aggressive on that point, but it does matter. 
Okay, so let's actually take a look at some data. Here is the, this is some analysis I did recently where, okay, this is, this is going a little off topic as far as talking about mastering descriptions, but it's an important point, so I'm going to share it anyway. The, this, oh, this is just bothering me. Got to move it just over there. So I just couldn't deal with it hanging off the end just that tiny little bit. I, this, this epic fantasy series that I'm writing, I'm doing rapid release over a 10 month period. The fourth book comes out on the 21st of September. These are not actual numbers. This is an Excel sheet that I built to, well, I can show you the actual Excel, Excel sheet. I just put it in the slide, but the actual Excel sheet is here. And this is a simulator so that I can put numbers in and do what ifs. What if I run an ad that has a cost per click of 0.45 and my conversion rate is 0.1, which is one in 10. Okay, if I have that and my read through from book one to book two is 50% and 90% the rest of the way out through book 10, which isn't out yet, I'm only writing on book seven, but I'm doing my analysis based on the read through potential. So if I do that and I spend $900 with a one in 10 conversion rate, I will spend, uh, $900 in a period of time, I will get from book one, $68 from book two, 345. So after the 50% read through, I am still losing money. After book three, I'm still losing money. I don't make a profit until people get to book four. But then as those people continue to read on, I end up with 138% ROI, theoretically, if I have 45 cent clicks. Now, I don't have 45 cent clicks, I have 25 cent clicks. Well, that changes it. So now I make a profit, I'm in the black on book three. This is something that not everybody understands about analysis in the book business. What we are doing when we're making decisions about our advertising, it's all pass fail. This tells me that at the, this conversion rate, I, I can spend 25 cents a, a click and I will make 332% return on investment over you know, by the time I get out to book 10 and people will get their chance to read through. I won't make money right away. They'll have to get into book three. But so, so this is all theoretical here. I can do things like change this. Um, the, these numbers, well, they are not the actual numbers for my new series because they haven't been out long enough to have the answers to the read through questions. These are based on, I have 12 other fiction novels and I have a couple series and I know that the worst one I have right now has a read through of 50%. The best one is 70%. So if I change this number because Maybe I'm a better writer now, and I think I am. Well, that jumps the ROI to 498, and I start making a profit on book two, which speaks to the importance of back matter. It speaks the importance of really doing a good job with your readers, because every time, any bit that you change this, if you just go from 50 to, let's just go to 51, you know, that, that knocks up the, so 338, I didn't look at what it was at 50, let's see, 332. So one point in read through improves the overall on a 10 book series by six points of ROI. Well, anywhere along the line, if you improve that, you know, you're, you're getting, you're getting better read through. And there are romance authors out there who get like 
90% from book one to book two. Oh, I didn't mean, I mean 90, sorry. 90% from book one to book two, and then they get 99% all the rest of the way because they are legends. I am not that good of a writer, but the difference is, you know, a romance author getting 90% and then 99% all the way through on the same theoretical cost per click and everything, he or she would make 977%, whereas me, realistically, 50, it's probably yeah, 300%. So this is where understanding analysis and the impact and making decisions, you know, do you want to add another book? On, I'm really getting off topic here. I can't help myself. It's just I love numbers so much. The point is, nothing I'm doing here is very advanced from an analytical standpoint. This is this little thing that I created. I, I'm sure most of you can create. There aren't that many formulas in here. It's just down here. There's a few formulas. Um, you know, I, I'll put them. I'll just scroll up. Oh, it doesn't get bigger. Sorry. Um, yeah, the somebody out there is going to ask, "Hey, is this available?" No, it's. I, I did this in three minutes. This is this is super easy Excel stuff. If you want this thing, build it yourself because learning how to do these formulas, um, you know, the revenue. Oh God, this is so far off topic. I, 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 mean, I have to stop, but the, the point is, okay, so this, this is where the data comes from that's over here. This was real data. This, so this is hypothetical here for the, 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 the read through it all of this, but I ran ads and uh, got 25 cent clicks. This was my actual conversion rate. The point being is that I was able to look at the conversion rate and know that though I wasn't making money in book one uh, and, until book three, the ad was still doing well enough that I was fine with it. And this was for these numbers were. Um, Oh, well, I mean, the, the study I did was actually can, Canadian sales using Facebook ads to drive them to Kobo. So it, I, I use that as an example as opposed to just an AMS ads example, which, you know, because I wrote an ads book, you know, that's what I'm known for. But the point being is, it does. It doesn't have to be an AMS click. It, it can be. It can be on. I, I did the same study with. Uh, it was Australia and Kobo. Again, running ads to Australia to try to drive sales to Kobo, and that conversion rate was ten percent. This one is is a little worse, nine and a half percent. But you know that's for all intents and purposes right in the same ballpark, and so. If you make your changes, you need to give it enough time that you have some data to where you can calculate a conversion rate and know how it's doing. Once you have a conversion rate, once you understand what your read-through is for your books, read-through doesn't change much over time. I had my Henry Wood Detective series for six years, seven years maybe, seven years, the read through was 42% from book one to book two. Now it was near 90% for the rest from uh, uh, to books three and four, but 42%. Now I did some studies in early 2018. I did research on back matter. And this is something that I do. I mean, I have a whole nother lecture on back matter in my course. And I was able to move my my read through, which was 42% for nearly seven years, up to 60% because of the changes I made in my back matter. And as I showed you earlier, I mean, that, that, that feeds through to your bottom line. And so uh, it, it's important. But my point being is, though this is a lecture about descriptions, 
it's it's not enough just to change your description and expect that you're going to see lots and lots of sales the next day. You need to look for 30 days, maybe 60 days, and do some analysis on the numbers. And then once you have that conversion rate, once you know your conversion rate, and then you, you figure out your, your read through, it makes running your business easier. This is important. And I can tell you that I've had so many people that have come to me because of the Mastering Amazon Ads book that didn't like math. And the ones that went from a few hundred dollars a month to five figures all said the same thing. They bought the book. They read it. There were tears. They read it again. No tears that time. The third time, they forced themselves to go through and do the math. And though the book, I mean, the, the book admittedly is a little dated, the first couple chapters where I'm telling you how to set up an ad don't even apply anymore. But running ads on Facebook or on Amazon is easy. That's not the important part of the book. The important part are the bits where I talk about the analysis. And these authors took the time to learn these basic things that I'm teaching you today. And once they understood them, it changed their lives. There was one woman in particular who, when she joined the group February 24th, 2017, when I started, the day I started, we got to know each other within a few weeks. There were only 50 people in the group at that time, and uh, I knew them all. Well, she had lots of books. She had a very large catalog, and she was doing $1,000 a month. She was on pace to do $1,000 or $12,000 of, of net profit in uh, that year, 2017. I told her, this is a lot of new stuff for you. I want you to pick one series. And she picked an eight book, uh, I, I think, if I remember, romance series. I said, do all of the work, the changing of the descriptions, the, the stuff I talk about as far as managing your ads for that one series and don't pick any other series because I want you to learn it well. And then in a couple months, once you're doing well with that, you can begin to do it on other series. And so she did. And then there came a point where she was like, well, I'm out of money. I got to stop doing advertising. And I asked her, you know, what's your ROI right now? And her ROI was 300%. And I said, well, do you have any way you can borrow money? Because you, at 300%, you really don't want to stop spending the money. And so she borrowed some money and she kept going. She reached out to me on the last, or the second last day, December 30th, 2017. And she had spent $80,000 on Amazon ads from February 24th or whenever she started her first ad after that group started to the 30th. She had 200,000 in revenue. 100 or 200,000 minus 80. She had $120,000 left over before taxes compared to being on the pace for 12,000. Again, you don't need a math degree to know that 120 is better than 12. And it, it, again, she, she worked really hard at this. And I can't stress enough how once you get over any, for those of you that have fear, some of you don't, some of you, you know, loved math in high school or college, but the ones that do, once you get over that and you realize that the data analytics that I'm teaching to address these issues and to learn these basics to get you to the next level, this is the easy stuff. This isn't a skill. I mean, we're not talking about things that one does at an auto insurance company. When it's at Geico, one of my studies, I wrote a computer computer code to help with the analysis. It was 200 pages of computer code to solve one problem. This is not that. This is fifth grade math. And once you understand that this is all of you have the ability to do this and you get over any fear you might have, it will change your life. Now, I'm going to finish up with, well, I, I should 
mention my course. I, I may or may not. I, I'll mention it in a moment, but I want to tell my copywriting miracle story because it's awesome. So I have the group and let me let me just show you the group. Um, I don't know that I can find the post, but mastering, uh, mastering Amazon descriptions. Okay, so I have this group here. And this is my group, and you can all join it if you like. Uh, mastering Amazon descriptions and author's guide. One night, short, a month or so after I'd launched the book and had this page up, there were a few hundred people that were members. A woman put a post up. And I happened to be looking at Facebook, and so I saw the little notice, and it said, Brian, you know, my name was Ted, Brian Meeks, I really enjoyed mastering Amazon descriptions. I bought it, and I started reading, and I just couldn't put it down. I'm learning so much until I got to chapter 42, 42 or 44. I, somebody's going to buy the book and correct me on this, but until I got to 42, and then I couldn't read any further. You don't include links to the books. Well, it had never occurred to me that when people buy Mastering Amazon Descriptions, because you're all authors, that anyone would actually want to buy the book. But she wanted the, that book. So I went and I got the, uh, I, I looked what, what chapter 42 was and uh, went to Amazon, got, got a link, dropped it in a chat, I said there. She, a couple minutes later, responded. She said, thank you for the link. And I want you to know I'm whatever years old, she, she was, I think my age, I'm 52. In my entire life, I have never owned a cookbook. I've never wanted a cookbook. I read the description that you wrote in Mastering Amazon descri Descriptions, and I had to buy that cookbook. And so she did. And I, I sold a cookbook to a woman that didn't want a cookbook. That was my copywriting miracle. And so when you get that level of, of good at your skill, at this skill of copywriting, it will change your life. The last thing I want to leave you with before I, I lamely promote my, my course is you get good at this skill by using it all the time. And I'm just going to go into Facebook and I'm going to find something. I just... Uh, Oh, uh, I don't know. Um, I'd like to find a picture of a guinea pig um, to make my point. Uh, I usually have a guinea okay. okay, well, this is adorable. Let me explain something to you. I'm not your pet. You are mine. Now, this is what it's true. I've had a cat or so I thought. But the yeah, I existed to do its bidding. Still, totally. Blank. Now I could have. You notice I've got the blank lines in there, and you do that by holding down Shift and hitting Enter. That's how you get the blank lines, and it looks like copywriting. It's not a. I mean, it is copywriting. It's not a big block of text. This is how I do all of my correspondence, email, talking on, uh, you know, posting on Facebook, chatting with people in my, uh, in my group. This is how I do it. And so if you do that all the time and you make it a habit of using shift, enter, enter to put in blank lines, not only do you make things easier to read, you get better at this skill. It seems like a silly small thing, but if you do it, you'll get better at it. It will improve your descriptions. You know what? It's also gonna improve your email blast to your newsletter, to your, your reader group, your, your people that have subscribed. And if you're using proper copywriting, because it's less of a burden to read, they will like your newsletters better which is going to lead to more open rates, better open rates, better click through. So th this, this skill set will change your life. And now if you want to you know, look away, um, I'm going to put up my course and I will 
for the alley folks, I will give a 30% discount. The code will be ALLI2019. And to get there, you go to teachable.com. And then, uh, oh, it wants me to log in. I don't want to log in. Um, oh, well, this is, this is, this is going poorly. Um, shoot, I will log in. Okay. Um, I wanted to show you the landing page. It's, it's Meek's Masterclasses is what you're looking for. Oh, gee. Well, you know, this is this has been poor. This has gone poorly. Meek's Masterclass. And this is what I'm trying to say. This is what you want to search for is Meek's Masterclasses. But I, I made the mistake of clearing my cache before I did this. And so it doesn't remember me. But really, there is a course there. And you will save 30% by putting ALLI space 2019. I, and so that, that, that will be lovely. Um, that's all. I'm going to do one more check really quickly and see if any of the folks have any more questions that are here since I might as well. Uh, it does not appear, appear um, there are any additional questions. So I'm going to wrap my wrap things up. That was the Brian D. Meeks mastering descriptions. And you can find me on Facebook. Save money on the course. Do it. It will change your life. Thank you, everyone. This is where I would hit the stop button. Not sure where it's at. I know it's here. Such a bad ending. I think this will do it.